This is the Razer Stream Controller X and it's here to take on the Elgato Stream Deck. But how does it measure up? Let's find out. Welcome back. If you're new around here, my name is Chris and this is Coalition Gaming, where I like to share my knowledge of PC building, repairing, and streaming with you all. If you're into that sort of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. Razer has been making attempts lately to break into the streamer slash content creator space with products like the audio mixer, their siren microphones, the Kio webcams, the stream controller, and now the stream controller X. This is obviously geared to people who really like the Elgato Stream Deck. This is their version of it, essentially but the question we're gonna answer is if this is better or worse than the Stream Deck. So first up, let's talk about the physical aspects of this and then we'll move on to stuff like the software. When interacting with this, the first thing you see is the face of it and it has an interchangeable faceplate just like the Stream Deck Mark II, but it is easier to remove. The button surfaces themselves do feel nice. The stand, while being non-adjustable, is actually very anti-slip and this is a major plus for me. Overall build quality on this does feel pretty solid. It's not a cheap device at all in terms of feel and it shows. Now let's talk about some cons on this device because it does have some. The buttons are still mushy like the Elgato Stream Decks. It's a missed opportunity here to add some tactile feel that would have been nice. Now, if you push the buttons down on the sides, it does wobble. So you'd wanna aim for right in the middle. The Stream Deck also has this problem. So this is another missed opportunity for Razer to have improved over the Stream Deck. This is not that big of a con, but it is for some people. The stand is not adjustable. Now this device is basically a loop deck or a device from loop deck. And with that said, it uses the loop deck software for all the button programming. The loop deck software, while it's still workable for the average person to be able to use and get everything up and running with, it's still not quite as straightforward as the Elgato Stream Deck software. So bit of a plus, but more of a con. Regarding the stand of this versus a Stream Deck Mark II, since I don't actually own one, one of my friends is here that does own one. What do you think? I think that it's much better than the Stream Deck Mark II stand. Much better. There you have it. After handling this and playing with it and testing it out, I honestly have to say that I feel like the build quality of it over my, my Elgato Stream Deck is better. Everything about it from how it sticks to its stand and how it sticks to the desk seems to just be better than the Stream Deck. And uh, as much as the buttons feel the same, the face plate being easier to change is also nice. So the experience with it, with just the physical portion of it, is really nice and at least as good as the Stream Deck. So that's definitely a plus for basically a first timer product in this kind of device category. With all that said, the software experience plays a huge part in devices like this. So let's get into the software a little bit. Let me just preface the software by saying that Synapse isn't exactly needed. You can install it and the stream controller will pop up just like this. But then when you click into it, you just see this and then you click launch loop deck and then it puts you into the loop deck software. So on first startup of the loop deck software, this, these are the shortcuts that are going to load to your device. Selecting here, you'll see all the different loop deck devices, but make sure the Razer Stream Controller X is selected. And this is just the first look at how the software is as soon as it launches. Let's get more into it. Now, a big thing with the loop deck software is it's also very much geared towards professionals. And if you look here at the profiles, you can see all sorts of other profiles that are preloaded and available to load professional stuff. For here, we're gonna load Premiere Pro and you can see all the different buttons that are already preloaded and able to be used with Premiere Pro and all the capabilities of what it can do. It's pretty uh, in depth as far as how you can use the buttons to control things in Adobe and uh, you know you can get creative with it to help you with your workflow now it's pretty neat that they preload a lot of functionalities especially for twitch integration like to be able to create clips run ads pull up your stream dashboard put it at your chat in emote only mode follower only mode slow mode stuff like that and you can see just changing pages here on the razor stream controller x there's media controls as well even some pre-built sound effects Now you can't have a device like this without a good marketplace for support. And as you can see here, this is the profiles. You can look, get all sorts of preset profiles for all sorts of different programs here. But as well, you can also get plugins at like this Loop Deck AI Assistant at the top here. But Nan Nano Leaf Control, Voice Meter, Razer Audio Mixers in here, all sorts of voice mod, Premiere Pro, Audition, all sorts of stuff. 
You even have icon packs, as you can see a bunch here if you wanted to get creative with the icons on your stream controller or other loop decks products. Um, even sound packs. I was actually surprised to see this, that there's a handful of some nice free sound packs that you could use to make some soundboard buttons. You can even add stream overlays. It looks like owned TV also is a pretty big supporter of the loop deck stuff. You see all the stuff that they've got here. Um, not all of it is free though, of course. I mean, you get option of getting some free stuff, but there also is pay stuff. Emotes and badges are available as well for further customization. And of course it's it's buy, not all not all free, although there definitely is some free stuff. And then you got other presets and styles you can look at here. Um, that's gonna be a little bit more than just a profile or just some buttons. Now I've gone ahead and created an air horn button to show you a really nifty feature about the soundboard functionality of this device. As in the software, it lets you specify where your output is gonna be going to. Super useful. Look, I'm gonna push the button right now. You hear it come out of the main speakers. Just like that. But if I wanted to go down to a different output, that'd be available too. Now the most common functionality most people are going to use this for is through OBS and you can just click the OBS button there. You click the little scenes button and this is going to be the button that'd be able to change scenes. I just drag and drop the testing. I push it. Hey, look, there I am. And you can just push the button to go back. And the way that the scenes works is just as simple and straightforward as anything. Now you can also go into your sources of, uh, and use a source toggle on any button. Just push, put that button under the scene that it goes to. And uh, I'm going to change scenes and you can just push this button to turn your camera or device or whatever off and on just like that. Now for a more visual representation of how source toggling looks inside of OBS, you can see pushing the button turns the eyeball off and on and the camera disappears and comes back. Now you can also make a button to control the volume of a source inside of OBS. So you can control something inside of OBS, the volume of it separately from what you're hearing in your headphones. You're literally just controlling what's going out to your recording or out to your stream. And this is a bit how it looks in actual usage. You just, there's a minus button and there's a plus button and you push those buttons. And as those buttons are getting pushed, the slider moves down or up as it is. And you can also just individually mute that source if needed. Now looking into the Twitch specific functionalities of it, and you're going to have to log into your own Twitch scrolling down here. You can see all the different functionalities you get that you're able to assign to buttons with this device. When I was first in the loop deck software, I added a button that was for audio output control. And I thought that meant muting all the output, but when I actually click the button, it shows me every application that is making noise and I can individually mute every single one of those applications. So just to show you, I have uh, a music video playing in YouTube on Google Chrome. I can just go ahead and control that. And there you hear the music and now I have it muted. And so being able to control each application's audio output is pretty powerful and it's just straight built into the software. Now I'm actually not a big Razer products user and I know a lot of people complain about their Synapse software. For, for you guys out there, a plus on this is that you don't have to use the Synapse software. You can use the Loop Deck software. And so you can get full use of this Razer device without having to resort to use Razer Synapse software. Now, if you're a big Razer device user, this will integrate with the rest of your devices via Synapse, and that's good too. With all that said, with the launch price of about 149, this is going to be competitive with Elgato Stream Deck in terms of pricing, in terms of features, in terms of build quality. Basically, you can't go wrong picking either one. So pick whatever you'd like. Now, when it comes to the Loop Deck software versus Elgato Stream Deck software, there is a little bit more to be said there. Like I've mentioned, Loop Deck software is just a little bit harder to use than the Elgato Stream Deck software, but it is also geared towards professional users. So in it, well, originally at least, it, it is easy to use as a normal user as well, but this does have a professional user set through the loop deck stuff. All sorts of plugins are already built for it. Imported profiles, you could already do all sorts of stuff with Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and all sorts of professional software. So maybe a slight advantage if that's the kind of content creation that you're in. But when you're looking at it from a streamer perspective and content creator that doesn't exactly dabble in that sort of thing, you can't go wrong with either device. This is a device that if I had to pick, if I had my pick of this or the Stream Deck after looking at both of these, I might lean towards this one basically, mostly because of how well put together it is. Now that you've seen this device, now that you've seen my coverage of it, software, physical, hardware, all that stuff, what do you think? 
Do you think that this is a competitive option to Elgato Stream Deck or just a really good option to have in the streaming space overall? Drop a comment down below and let's talk about that. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash Coalition Chris. So feel free to stop by, drop a follow, and let's talk more stream tech like this or PC building stuff, what have you. My name is Chris and I've been your stream technician. I'll see you guys in the next one.